up right where we left off. I hope to do this with this verse here. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Brother, we can say that this is really the truth. Amen. This, is, this is the way it is. We are a new creation. This is something Paul is telling us. This is an affirmation of something that is, that is true. This is not about some kind of future thing. Now, the Scriptures do talk about the future quite a bit. But uh, we shall be like Him, and we shall see Him, and we shall reign with Him. These are all future things. But right now, right now, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, new creation. Now, throughout uh, Paul's letters, uh, he will... Uh, Seven times I counted that he will tell the, the saints to put on something. Yeah. He will tell them to put on things concerning the, uh, the things of God. Uh, he'll tell them, put on the whole armor of God and put on humbleness of mind and meekness and kindness, long-suffering. Put those on. Put on charity. Paul tells uh, the brethren to do these things. Now, why does the apostle Paul tell the saints to uh, these kind of things? It's because... Uh, the verse I just read to begin with, that if a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And old things are passed away, and all things have become new. The saints have been given something. It is brand new. There's never been anything like it before. And Paul is exhorting them to put it on. That's why we have our exhortations as we do, that ye put off, and that ye put on. Put off the former thing, and you put on the new thing. Put off the old order and, and put on that new thing that God has given us. The old order is, is temporal and dying and it's corrupt. It cannot do the work that God wants to be done. And uh, it, the old order is like a sinking ship. And the call has gone out to everyone to abandon ship. Uh, we can see it sinking even now. And to call it abandon ship. Here, here it is in the words of Scripture. And that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and holiness. And let us put off that part that belongs to the world then, and put on that which belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the Scriptures is always speaking of the same kind of thing, just in different words, when it says walk in the Spirit, mind the things of Christ. Let Christ uh, dwell richly in your, in, in your hearts by faith. Let brotherly love continue. Uh, let us consider one another good uh, unto love and good works. Now, you had to put on the new man for any of these to take place. See? So, essentially, we're saying the same thing. Now, there's one thing to consider in all of this, in the walking of the Spirit and minding the things of God and setting your affections on things above and, and putting on the new creation. There's, there's, there's something to consider in all of this, and it is the old nature we just, just, just discussed. The, uh, the nature of the flesh and the old man uh, it's actually in the way. In yeah. yeah. matters pertaining to God, and uh, the old man, the flesh, he bitterly opposes them. And in the days of our disobedience, brethren, the flesh had the final say in the matter too. But Paul is telling the saints to put on something. Now he doesn't tell them to, to do something that uh, they can't do. Yeah, and right. he's not telling them to put on something that they don't have. Yeah. See, so it's... Uh, it's something we can do, and it's something that we do have. Our old man has been crucified, and the body of sin has been destroyed. Paul talks about this quite a bit in Romans 6. He told the Galatians, they that are of Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. And we were baptized into Christ. We consented to these things, brethren. And so it behooves the brethren to put on Christ an ever-increasing measure the body of sin is a dead thing, and it must be put off. And uh, just like the, and, and, and it's been done for us. All we got to do is put it off. It's a dead thing. Just like the new man must be put on, uh, we must put off the remnants of that old man. You know, I thought about Satan when I was preparing this. Satan as the old serpent, as he is told to be, the old serpent. How the old man is just like him, the flesh is just like him. We have to shed the old man. And to make provisions for the new, you see, we have to we uh we have to do this. We have to shed the old man like a snake sheds his skin. 
<laughs> you do. Satan cannot shed his skin, brethren. God has made provisions that we can do this, but Satan can't. When we was growing up, we lived in the woods and around the woods. There's a lot of woods around us, and we had a, a building out back, and we stored everything in. And it was not uncommon to go out there and see snake skin. And you jump right at first when you seen it because then you realize it was a snake skin. You know, but you, it scared you. It was scary. But, uh, but you begin to notice, you know, that you always see a lot. Of, we saw quite often, we see these snake skins were always found in a tight spot. You, you'll, you'll notice they were. The, they, uh, you could see where the snake had to squ actually squeeze through his place to get that skin off of him. And he, actually what he was doing, he was scraping that old skin off of him. He, he made it through. He squeezed to a tight spot, maybe some rough cut two before or something. And he, and he, and he, he scraped that uh, skin off, shed that old skin. He kept right on going. Uh, during his lifetime, now you know a snake will shed his skin many times. Uh, as he grows, it will be necessary for him to, to shed that skin. And you can tell by looking at his skin how big the snake is. That's a big snake if he's left a big skin behind as he has. But uh, now, the fact that do, we do not remain in a locked position like Satan, that means we can put off the old man. And, uh, and, and, and in, in itself is a reason of uh, thanksgiving and uh, Humble thanksgiving and great rejoicing. Each time we say no, brethren, and each time we defer to the new man, or we're putting off the skin of deceit and wickedness, and we're leaving it behind, and we just keep right on going. And you can say that I've just grown. You see, I've just grown some. And uh, in those difficult times, when it's hard to get through place, why, we thank God for them straight and narrow places because God has provided some access, some provision where we can crucify the flesh, mortify the deeds of the body. So we want to welcome these times. Uh, Paul said, God forbid that I should glory, saving the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh yeah. to fulfill the lust thereof. Yeah. You can only be in the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Yeah, right. Bring every thought into subjection. These are things that Paul would admonish the brethren to do and, and as today, cast down imaginations and bring every, everything that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. It's crucifying the flesh and, and mortifying the deeds of the body. We know that the Lord has detached Himself from this earth. He has. Uh, the Lord is no longer here. And we no, lo no longer know the Lord after the earth and the, and the way it was. And, uh, and, and we know this because we have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge, after the image of Him that created Him. So we can walk this earth as our Lord did. We can. We can do it. He wasn't attached to this world. Never was. He came here. He was, never, he was never obliged to it. One way. And we can walk in the same nature that we've been given. We don't have to be obliged to the world and, and, and consent to this nature of the world. God has made a provision where we can just absolutely reject it. It's just up to you to say, I reject it. Though it requires putting on the new man, though, brethren, and which is created after of the image of our Lord and putting off of the old man well you know brother and I know that uh, you have done this that that you desire to do these things and uh, all all their brethren have a heart you know to to move in this direction striving and perfection in these matters <laughs> now the world is not doing this uh, and, it, and this is where it creates the opposition and the hindrances and but you see like some of the brethren were talking this morning, so, but this has been given as an opportunity for you, brethren, to, to uh, put off the old man and, and thereby lay up for yourself uh, treasures in heaven. That's right. Okay, Amen. where, where uh, they, they're, they'll stay intact. You haven't got to worry about something happening to them. They're, they're there, and then when we get there, they'll be there waiting on That's us. Right. And so, brethren, uh, as we continue this morning in preparing ourselves for this time, uh, just direct your attention to these things and let this be, you know, a, a source of strength for you that, you know, while you're
putting off the old man. See, you're enabling yourself to, to put on the new man. Amen. Thank Amen. you, brother. Amen.